The final point brought up in the BBC video are the programmer's more personal comments. Among the other files in the Climategate scandal was one called Harry Readme, which was a running log the programmer made as he worked on the CRU database. Being lost. There are also plaintive comments by one of the programmers at the University of East Anglia trying to grapple with the software. And so in, in here, he says some things like, uh, something's very wrong, it's my programming ability, isn't it? And, you know, once again, uh, it's further confirmation that my abilities are below what is required here. In fact, the programmer is disarmingly frank. He goes on, yep, my awful programming strikes again. So uh, first off, I think that to use this as an argument against CRU is a bit of an ad hominem. The programmer lacks self-confidence, therefore his work is bad. Programmers, I've found, can have large but fragile egos, and watching a programmer beat himself up over this bug or that is nothing new to me. The BBC report doesn't go into that much detail inside Harry Read Me, but I want to point out some gems from the log that other skeptics had dug up. Here's one. Oh, fuck this. It's Sunday evening, I've worked all weekend, and just when I thought it was done, I'm hitting yet another problem that's based on the hopeless state of our databases. There is no uniform data integrity. It's just a catalog of issues that continues to grow as they're found. Now, this sounds pretty bad, but what does it mean? The key phrase here is data integrity. Now, if you're not familiar with computer science, you might look at the word integrity and think it means that the data is not trustworthy or upstanding in some way. However, data integrity means something different from that. It refers to the structure and architecture of a database, making sure that the relationships between tables are correct, uh, making sure that a data item occurs in one and only one place in the database, and otherwise shows up as references to that data item elsewhere, that sort of thing. That's a very different matter. If you took the raw climate data, which would be tables of records collected from various weather stations with lists of temperatures, times, and locations, According to computer science, at this point you have no data integrity at all. It's only when you've indexed and organized the data into databases so that they could be queried efficiently that you start working towards data integrity. So we know that the programmer was struggling with data integrity throughout the project. I'm not surprised. He likely had to work with data coming from many different stations and kinds of stations and had to work with tree rings and ice cores and other forms of historical tech temperature measuring, all with very different formats and challenges when it came to indexing and taming them. So let's look at another gem of his statements. I am very sorry to report that the rest of the databases seem to be in nearly as poor a state as Australia was. Ark! There truly is no end in sight. We can have a proper result, but only by including a load of garbage. Now, if you don't know about his data integrity issues, you might think the load of garbage means that he has to mix bad data in with good data in order to get a report, doing who knows what to the graph curve. But since we do know about his data integrity issues, it's more clear what including a load of garbage means. He has to load up two tables because of data items in both, and he has to make sure they both match. He has to load up three tables in turn to get a reference to a reference to a reference because the shortcut hasn't been made yet, that sort of thing. Now, you might be thinking, wouldn't problems with data integrity cause problems with the calculations anyway? Well, actually, no. Errors with data integrity are a different beast than errors with calculations. You're not going to get a case where, say, temperatures will bump up slightly in the final report. Rather, you'll get cases where the program's just plain confused about an ambiguous request, or cases where you just grab the wrong column and fill your temperatures with reference IDs. In other words, obvious problems that are spotted right away and then worked on right away. All in all, I think that while the source code is held up as a true smoking gun, it's being analyzed by the skeptics in the same way they analyze the emails, taking a small part, misunderstanding or misreading some points in it, and assuming far too much about the scientists.